Hey, dude, this dog leg like, stinks, man. Okay, groomer, do something about it, man. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. Hey, all you pet stylists. You found the groom pod. Welcome to our virtual salon. My name is Susie, and I'm your host. I'm a mobile groomer from Seattle, Washington, and anyone who knows me will tell you I love to talk, especially about my job. One of my favorite people to talk to is my friend and mentor and co-star of the show, Miss Barbara Bird. Hey, groomers. Hey, Susie. We're here. We are. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing excellent, <clears throat> except for my voice has a frog in it. Barbara Bird, how are you today? Hey, I'm excited to be here today because I'm going to do something a little bit different. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, I'm going to talk about terrier grooming, but not in terms of taking apart a whole breed profile. I'm going to compare three similar looking dogs and try to help us distinguish among them and manifest that in our grooming. So that's a whole new approach, for me anyway, and I'm excited to bring it on today. Excellent. We're also going to talk about the Max and maybe a little bit about Crown Royal number three. And this is episode 388 of the Groom Pod, recorded on October 1st, 2023 in Snohomish, Washington and Tucson, Arizona. What's News brought to you by Groomore Software. If you haven't found Groomore, you're missing out. Groomore is an all-in-one software solution for your grooming business. Whether you are a solo mobile groomer or manage several shops, Groomore has everything you need. 24-hour online booking and forms, routing, credit card processing, reminders, Google Calendar and QuickBooks integration, and so much more. And the best customer service anywhere. Shop mobile or house call, Groomore has you covered. And they're giving us a free month. Just enter GroomPod22 in the coupon code. We got a donation. I know it. It's from Carly, who's with Fur Babies, and I couldn't pronounce her name. So I'm just going Carly with Fur Babies. (laughs) Thanks, Carly. We'll send that right to Barbara. That's cool. And I went to a wedding this week. It was very exciting. And the weird thing about it is when I sat down at the table, it was my nephew. And there were a lot of people there much younger than me. A lot of his friends I didn't know. A lot of her friends and family I had never met. So I chose a table kind of in the background. We grabbed our food and we sat down. And lo and behold, next to us appears some people whose dog I groomed. And I thought I recognized them, but it was a latchkey house, like one of those houses where you never see the people. So I wasn't positive. And then I snuck over and I asked my brother, I said, is is that the Kluwers? And he said, yes. So they sat across from me. And then my very favorite labs owner, Liz, sits down next to me and her date, her husband, boyfriend, I don't know what he is at this point. I think it's still a boyfriend, sits down next to me. And then next to them sits down yet another one of my grooming clients. So we had a table full of my grooming clients at my nephew's wedding. I didn't even expect that. It just came out of the blue. It was crazy. It's what happens when you live in a smaller community and you stay there for ever and ever. I didn't realize how many people my brother had fed my way. Thank him afterwards. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we laughed about it a little bit. It was a great wedding, but it really put a cramp in my whole week because we were gone for three days. It was a destination wedding and we went in the camper. So I counted how many dogs I did in those three and a half days. I did three haircuts. Two of them were Westies, which kind of plays into what we're going to talk about a little bit later. One of them Actually, four haircuts, two Westies, a schnoodle, and a malty something dark. And then uh, eight baths and D-sheds. Six of them were D-sheds, two of them were baths. There was hair everywhere in the trailer. I was combing it out at the wedding. (laughs) It was a lot. (laughs) It's interesting. I've leaned away from the uh, haircuts, except for the drop coats. I had a lot of drop coats. 
And then I've got a bunch of bass and dee sheds. I think that's pretty good. I like to do the dee sheds because I can listen to the podcasts and learn stuff while I'm working. And it's not so taxing on my body because I put my hose in a hose clamp. So I don't have the pressure of the hose pulling on me when I'm drying. It works out really well. And if you can't see, I'm pantomiming the hose clamp and the drying <laughs> for Barbara. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got them all done. I went on this vacation. I only have one dog today and I got all the reschedules in already. So welcome to fall. Yeah, it's slightly cooled down here, although we still had a couple of 100 degree days this week. But it's really nice in the morning and, and I'm so happy to welcome up. October because it's one of my most favorite months in Tucson. We have these wild and beautiful sunsets. Oh, I'm, if I move, I'm going to so miss the sunsets. Oh, yeah, I bet. And the, the temperature, you know, I think that's why you say you think I'm feeling better. It's because I am, because it's cooler. You know, because like, I'm not suffering so much. That heat on top of having a heart problem was just keeping me down, keeping me down. Well, this podcast is brought to you by our kind sponsors, Best Shot, Show Season, Evolution Shares, Groomore, and Stasco. And if you guys would like to donate to Barbara's cleanup cause, relocation, whatever we end up doing, you can do so at the website, thegroompod.com, by clicking on the donation button that says Barbara on it. Or if you'd like to support the show, which will continue no matter where she is, will be at the Patreon subscription button right next to Barbara's button. Okay, so uh, that's me. So shall we take a break and head into our first appointment? Okay. All righty. Let me tell you about Best Shot's newest addition to the Ultramax Pro line. Ultramax Hair Hold is a flexible hairspray that can be layered on for a stronger hold. Ultramax Hair Hold Spray is great, but my favorite new product is called the Max, and I won't groom without it. It's a fragrance-free, ultra-concentrate conditioner and detangler. It reduces drying time and handles undercoat and tangles like magic. Just a few drops in the final rinse or spray it on and dry it in. Contact your favorite Best Shot distributor or learn more online at bestshotpet.com. Grooming success begins with Best Shot in your tub. Made from the best stuff on earth. Ready, groomers? Here comes our first appointment. I'm so excited about this new idea, this new way of talking about grooming, especially comparing all the breeds. So what gave you this idea? When I was in the hospital, Dave groomed some of my dogs, and most of them, he does a better job than I do. I have two Norwich Terriers that I've been grooming for quite a while. One of them is now very old and no longer gets hand stripped. He's getting a coat kind of like my hair. <laughs> and um, the other one is young and has a, he's got a show coat. He's very well bred. And this little dog is named Cooper and um, he gets hand stripped. And I want to make a point about the difference between groom profile pet grooming and show grooming because there's a distinct difference in what so many groomers do is it's either show grooming or it's pet grooming. But there's an in-between that's what we do when we try to manifest the breed profile on the pets and we kind of shortcut here and there and compromise there and we clip where the weed instead of hand strip and so on and so forth. But we achieve a look that's recognizable as the breed. But there are groomers that don't know the breed profiles. And if you start reading the AKC breed standard, the AKC breed standard is just like somewhat confusing in general. And it doesn't really tell you how to get there from here, though the pictures can be helpful. I like to use... Jody Murphy's Dog Grooming Simplified because she's got great pictures of good dogs groomed. And it is groomed 
for show, show grooms. And you know, here's another thing. I'm going to do three terriers that are very similar, but different. And they all three have round heads. And let's look at what the distinctions are. And the three breeds are Norwich Terrier, Cairn Terrier, and Westie. Cool. Perfect. So all three of them have round heads. And round heads are kind of done in concentric circles. So you've got a small circle that's kind of around the nose and the mouth. And then another midway circle that's kind of halfway up. And then you've got the outside of the head circle. The difference is slight, but very important. One of those heads is much smaller than the others. And that would be the Norwich Terrier. Even though it has a rounded head, you have some hair right in front of the opening of the ears. It's a rounded head, but it's really in reality, especially in younger dogs, it's the shortest, it's the smallest round head. The Cairn Terrier is the medium and the Westie is the larger head. What's the hardest thing on the Westie is getting the size of the head to kind of stand out instead of just fall down into a rectangle, you know, how to get a square head. And both the Cairn and the Westie have hair on their crown that is the same distance, the same height as where you have tipped the ears and where you tip the ears is on Westies. You just do one third of the top of the ear. And I'm going to say there's exceptions to that. The cairn, you do a little bit more tip showing, you know, it has to be where the roundness of the head is. So you don't have this Hair that's like on the back of the ear that's sticking out, that's making the the head look square again. The Norwich Terrier is almost flat on the top of the head. It's just a little thick there. What do you do with the ears? Okay, so the ears, the Norwich Terrier ears are pretty much cleaned out from the back and almost to the skull in the front. So going with your principle, then, that would be the shortest. It would definitely look a little bit flat. See, I've never done one. We have quite a few around here. And it's, it, you know, and it, it's important. And if you know how to do the, the Nor- Norwich, you can do, do it on a mixed breed or on others. It's just fun to know these little distinctions. And what what drives me crazy about grooming books is that they very rarely show you the back of the ears of these pricked ears. And even in Jody's book, you can't quite tell. But she does give you a tip. And I'm going to read you Tip to remember from Jody Murphy on tipping ears of the terriers. Okay, here's the tip. Instead of clipping the outside top portion of a West Air Can Terrier ear, that would be the back. For example, comb all the coat to the side of the ear tip and scissor the edge of the ear tight. Comb the coat to the opposite edge of the ear and scissor that edge right. This will give a nice tight ear tip without the look of a sharp clipped line. The inside tip of the ear can be clipped with a 15 or a 40 blade for a neat appearance. So it's the back of the ear that she's talking about. And I know know exactly what happens because I saw the time. You take the back and you go from the third point to the top. And then there's this line where you started that short clipper. So what do you do? Do you take the whole back of the ear clean? Or do you blend with your scissors? That's what I usually do. I would blend. I do a lot of thinning scissor 
ears. And the other place where you want to blend with the round heads is the back of the neck, where the back of the neck meets the skull. There should not be an indentation there. You mean it shouldn't look like a flower on a stem? Hey, <laughs> good job. <laughs> now, it's not a crested neck like a Bichon in show clip might be, but it's a it's a tapered, it's blended. So the back of the neck is a straight line down to the top line and then over and then the tail goes up. So it's slanted down from the back of the skull to the withers and then straight across to the base of the tail and then the tail goes up and the tail, all three of these, well, the Karen and the Westie have carrot shaped tails. They're naturally more wide at the base of the tail than they are at the top. The can carrier has the bushiest tail, but it's not a flag tail. And all of them, you can take a, I take my Figura clipper with the red small comb and just go right up from the asshole, right up to the tip of the tail on the back of the tail, and then just scissor anything that sticks in you know what I mean not sticks out because you want that shape on the outside but the front of the tail is the same length as the body if you're using a short clipper to do the body which I would never do you want to do a short clipper on the front of the tail but generally speaking I love to use snap-on combs on these coats because they achieve a hand strip look. The lines that we leave with the snap-on comb, it's okay. This is a pet. It's okay. We're giving it kind of a rough and ready hand stripped appearance. And in a week, it's going to look more natural. And you don't want, well, and you can use your fine tooth comb. I use my half moon comb. After I use the snap-on comb on anything, I use my fine tooth comb and then that's kind of smooths it out. But you don't want satin smooth pattern back and top line on these terriers. They're not intended to be satiny smooth. Does that make sense? Yeah, I usually use for the people that want them shorter, I use that Romani three rocker comb that has the rounded bottom and it's just a three comb and it leaves all kinds of texture left on the back. And that's exactly what you're talking about is not taking the texture out of the coat. Yeah, that's a little bit shorter. I Well, this is for people who are used to being, sh you know, having a seven blade taken down the back. No, you see a seven blade and a ten blade that's horrible. Yep. Nothing makes me cringe as much as a ten blade on a Westy back. Oh, my God. How do you ever blend that in? The Westie has a skirt, but it's not a curtain, and it's not a hula skirt. When you do it super short on the top of the back, it's very hard. In fact, use a snap-on comb to blend it in. You want to bring that skirt down on the body to just under the bend of the ribs. So it's low. It's low, people. I have a question about the shape of that underline. Is it like a bridge or is it like a hot rod? Like, does it angle from the front legs to the tuck up or does it go more in like an upside down U? Because I've seen both. Don't think of it as from the front to the back. Okay, so what happens is that you want the front legs to be distinguished. So that you see the movement of those shoulders and, and how that works. And on the back legs, you want to blend from the feathering of the top of the back leg into kind of a tuck up, slight, slight tuck up, and then straight to about the elbow. I get that. That makes sense. Yeah. And you want to show that thigh muscle, right? Yeah. All terriers are muscular breeds. All terriers are muscle guys and gals. And on the shoulder, by the way, 
you want to reveal the shoulder and you want to clip or scissor down the front of the shoulder, straight down the front leg. That's a line in and of itself. If you stop at the top and let it hang in a bib, it's fucked up. <laughs> okay? You want to actually have a straight line from the tight shoulder straight down the front of the front leg. So the front legs are somewhat smoother. And then there's a little bit of a, um, uh, it's not a bib because a bib goes from inner leg to inner leg and it's just this whole front. Because you've taken down the shoulder, I'm going down my boob. <laughs> <laughs> Off with these things. Wait a minute. Because you've taken down the shoulder, there's just a little bit in the front that's left. You want to be aware of those colics there because you can very easily expose those. And that's not such a big deal. But another point, the back of the head of the Westie actually begins kind of deep with the occiput. You don't want to do on top of the occiput, which is the little bony part of the back of the skull. You want to do nice and down at the base of it and blend up so that you have a straight line down the neck to the top of the head. So is that another circle then on the side of the head? Like a circle from the back of the ears over the top, down past the nose, and then up underneath the chin? A kind of, and then kind of like you would, it's not unlike you would see uh, with a poodle. Okay. But you don't want to have a cap on his head. It's all one thing. What I usually do with the backs of the ears of the Westie is I usually take a four or a five blade and do the back of the ears. And then that helps me get the right shape of the back of the skull. And then the roundness from the front bottom of the ears and around. What you don't see on my grooming is fringe on the side of the ears up to the tippies. I would rather bring the tips down. If you're going to have a short crown or a flat crown, or if the dog, I mean, it's very hard. We don't ever get a full puffed out Westy head. We get pancake hair. Yeah, I don't have time to do that, but I definitely have time to... Shorten the top of the head and put some, yeah, hairspray, best shot. I also like eye groom scissoring spray. Spray the top of that head and then take your comb and just pull it out to its full length. And the way that I shorten it, I do scissor over fingers. So I pull it up. I find where I am. Parallel to the ear where I've tipped the ears, I don't want it to be longer than where the ear tip is. And I cut it off that way, and that helps it just all take a good shape. Then I take the size of the hair at the back, pull those up, and I trim that. So that starts to give them some lift. I'm doing my own hair. I'm so way. sorry this is not a visual podcast because Barbara's doing a fantastic <laughs> job of illustrating a Westy head without any pokey up ears. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> you guys are missing out. That's what you do. And, you know, spray a little bit on the sides of the head and comb it up as well as when you're going to do a Westy, you want to dry the hair in the direction you want the hair to be. So don't go from the forehead and high velocity the whole crown back dry from the back forward will help lift that whole head and get that head going where, where you want it i also use my blenders when you're doing the hair over your fingers yeah whatever you want it'll it'll work good okay another way that i get kind of that mid concentric circle because it's hard to get that when there's too much hair in the middle of the 
face, it falls. I take my chunkers and I just jab in there. You know where I got that inspiration from the last hairdresser I went to? That's how she would cut my hair. It was short. She would just go straight in and cut. I said, what the hell? It scared the crap out of me. But my hair came out really cute. And I said, oh, I can do that. And chunkers are good. You just go in and lighten that. Just chunk some chunks. She's going perpendicular to the head of the dog. I'm going perpendicular to my head and I'm just making single cuts. I'm not sitting in there and munching on it with my thinners because that'll make holes in it. You're kind of adding texture. I also recommend on YouTube taking a look at Jonathan David's How to Groom a Westie because he, he's got that scissor over finger shit down really well. I think he was a barber before he was a a groomer or something. So, okay, so now where where are we? Um, the, okay, final thing. The skirt or underline of the cairn is not as long as the Westie. It's just an inch or two. And the skirt or underline of the Norwich Terrier is the shortest. They've got the shortest legs. You want them to be like real square looking. You want a little blocky, a little block of energy for your, you know. And um, da -da -da -da. tight feet on everybody, right? And under the tail, you want to get around the rectum, but you don't want to do a baboon butt. Unless they have, you know, like some kind of a problem and the people request a bald ass, you want to just get around there and you want to scissor the inside of the back legs under the asshole so that they're not too scruffy, not a skirt, not a puffed out. Use your, use your thinning scissors and thin them and then just go up on the inside and take some of that hair out, depending on their lifestyle. The Norwich Terrier has even less hair around the um, ass and inside of the back legs. Can I ask another question? You may, any time you want. On the jacket of the three different dogs, are, is the jacket all the same or is variance in that? The Norwich Terrier has the thickest jacket. Okay. And the Norwich Terrier has, I'm going to read what Jody says. This is important. The Norwich Terrier has a mane on the neck and shoulders, which is characteristic of this breed. Ah. This area should be carefully blended with thinning scissors and should not be removed. The Westie has a more sculpted, tight neck. They all have a little U-shaped throat. It's the same thing as with the Bichon. My Westie head's got a whole lot better after I learned how to do a round Bichon head. But that's another whole conversation, and we won't say that. But getting a short throat is important to being able to get a nice round cheeks. Okay? So the North has a pretty thick coat. The Cairn Terrier depends on the dog's coat and on the people, but it's pretty much a rough and ready terrier. The Cairn Terrier looks like a shorter, messier Westie. <laughs> okay. Right? Yes. And, and here's the deal. You do not have to worry about fine, perfect scissoring on these terriers because they're working dogs. They're rough. We're not doing show grooming. Your chunkers are your best friends. I have this uh, terrier named Duffy that goes back and forth from, I think it's Michigan to Tucson. And every fall when he comes back from Michigan, has this long, dragging skirt. I just want to tell that groomer, chop that off with your chunkers. It's not supposed to be long and draggy. And actually, 
the Westie skirt doesn't drag the ground either. Now, the Scottish Terrier pretty much has this in for show anyway, pretty much has a skirt that goes to the ground. But we're not doing that. And for pet, we often raise that skirt on the Scottish Terrier too, which by the way, has a more pencil shaped tail, pretty much the same length as the body. How are we doing? I think we pretty much got some points in there. So use the Groom Pod discussion group to ask me questions or make comments or add your own tips. We love that. We're partners with that Facebook page and that's where we get a lot of our interactions. So let me know if that was helpful. All right. Let's take another break. And then we have yet another really exciting topic coming up, which features the Max, which is one of my favorite products, and Crown Royal, which I don't know very much about, although Michael at Cascade does carry them both. Chris Bear Anthony, visiting the groom pod again. Okay, so you know I love my Evolution Swivel Shears. And you even know that these customizable shears come in non-swivel as well. But did you know that they're the only ones I've been trusting my sharpening with for around 15 years? And that that's how we met? What? You haven't tried their sharpening yet? If so, send in your next batch of sharpening and you'll get one shear sharpened for free with a $75 order just for telling them where you heard about them. Your shears and blades will thank you. Sometimes my clients don't like a walking air freshener. When these crazy people request a scent-free option, I go right to Show Season. Show Season True Tearless Shampoo and Hypo Conditioner fit the bill. They are totally fragrance-free and yet hold up on their own as good products. True Tearless has been expertly formulated to be gentle to the eyes, skin, and hair while maintaining good cleaning power. Hypo conditioner is a great option as well, and it's one of our favorite conditioners with or without fragrance. So let's get fragrance-free. Use True Tearless and Hypo Conditioner from Show Season today. Go to showseasongrooming.com. And remember, the tent sale is coming up in March of 2024, and quite possibly Barbara and I will be in attendance. And even if we don't make it this year, Make sure you attend that tent sale because show season puts on a good party. Groomers, take your seats. It's time for Bee Birds Classroom. Okay, so the uh, on the Facebook group, a question was asked um, if I could compare the. Crown Royale Magic Touch Formula Number no. Three and the Max. So I have to say that it, it's very hard because Crown Royale does not give the real names of the ingredients. This is what they say: formulated with conditioners, optical brighteners, and silicones. Really, that's the whole thing. <laughs> This spray gives a luxurious, luxurious sheen, repels dirt, and prevents coat matting. So zero disclosure. Yeah, that's just like pretty much nothing. Now, it says that it doesn't build up, and that suggests that it's somewhat a newer silicone than the original silicone. It's very hard for me to really do a, a, an analysis of the ingredients when they're just conditioners, optical brighteners, and silicones. Listen, I can go to a chemical supplier website and there'll be 18 to 25 different silicone ingredients. And that's just one supplier. There's dozens and dozens and and every year there's more because the essence of silicone is that it has a molecule with a backbone that allows many different other things to be attached 
to become new compounds, a copolymer. So dimethicone is the original silicon oil. The stuff, ice on ice, all of those detanglers that came out in the 80s, those were dimethicone oil. And how dimethicone worked, how it was deposited, is that it was emulsified in water, and then you spray it on, and then the water evaporates, and it leaves the oil. Or if it's in a shampoo, you know, one of the original two-in-ones conditioning shampoos were made with dimethicone. The oil deposited on the coat and then the rinse water just washed everything else away and you were left with kind of a silicone coating there. But it was uh, not necessarily consistent throughout the coat, depending on your application process. And it tended to build up. If you use too much, it could be oily. It could definitely slip on the floor and you <laughs> still can. <laughs> there were complaints about it. It wasn't perfect. So let's take a look at the max because the max has a single ingredient, a single silicone ingredient that is described as advanced amino modified silicone polyether polymer. Woo! Yeah, that's a lot. That's almost as much of a mouthful as conditioners, optical brighteners, and silicones, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Advanced amino modified silicone polyether polymer. So I'm going to explain the advance has to do with it's not your grandmother's dimethicone. Okay. Silicones are constantly evolving. Cosmetic silicone chemistry is a whole specialty. There's a whole bunch of geeky <laughs> guys and gals. I would be there myself if I could start all over. They just devote their lives to imagining and manifesting outrageous silicone combinations. Research and development. Research and development in the cosmetic industry, it's constantly researching and developing and reacting to consumer demand. So one of the things on silicones that's not in this product, but that you can find is silicones that are married to green plant products, silicones that are married to wheat protein or other vegetable protein. And that's to satisfy our needs for more plant-like natural. So it's a more natural silicone, yeah? Well, this one doesn't even pretend to be natural. It's advanced amino modified is one of the first or let's just say second generation silicone ingredients. They were amino modified. It was one of the first major modifications of dimethicone that happened. And uh, I talked to my girlfriend, AI, and she said, the introduction of amino modified dimethicone allowed formulators to enhance the conditioning and smoothing products of hair care products. These amino modified silicone can bond to the hair surface, providing longer lasting effects compared to traditional dimethicone. Traditional dimethicone was just an oil and just like any other oil, uh, it could just like wear off, but amino modified, they're cationic, Susie, they're cationic. They have ionic bonds and they have the ability to search out damaged areas of the hair shaft and put a little more there and a little less on the not damaged part of a hair shaft. It's not equally thick all over it's a it's a coating but it's not equal they go to where they're needed the most and they help fill in 
and make a smooth hair shaft. They're kind of cool. Yeah, that is really cool. That's definitely better living through science. So that was a, a major modification. And then this business about what is polyether polymer? Well, polymer just means many parts. It's a mo further modification with PEG technology. So almost all polyether polymers are PEG number, like PEG 12 dimethicone. PEG is polyethylene glycol. And PEG makes the silicone ever so much more water soluble. And the number means how much of it's in there or what kind of it's in there? It means how many moles of polyethylene glycol. So there's PEG7 silicon, PEG10 silicon, PEG12 silicon, different manufacturers make what they like and what they think works in their formulas. Basically, it's pegged. Now, pegged ingredients are often targeted as bad, but that's nonsense. And the reason that they're bad is that they claim that there is manufacturing byproducts that are toxic. But all pegged ingredients are vacuum cleaned. They, they, they suck off any <laughs> unwanted byproducts until any byproducts are at such a low, 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 low minuscule portion that they're not dangerous and they're not going to build up and they don't make you have cancer or any of that other stuff. They're not bad for skin. They make an ingredient more soluble, more friendly uh, with other ingredients and less of it needs to be used to be effective. So that's what is in the max. Advanced amino modified silicon polyether polymers. Just that one ingredient. That makes it pretty allergy friendly then, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, there's no fragrance. So most allergies are caused by fragrances. This one is fragrance-free. Not only does it not trigger allergic reactions, but it doesn't interfere with the fragrance that you've used for your shampoo and conditioner or your cologne or whatever. It's just totally neutral. It doesn't add its own stuff. And I have to say something about Crown Royale Magic Touch Formula number three. I couldn't stand the fragrance. I have to laugh at that because I actually like the smell of Old Spice. That's because your daddy probably used Old Spice and this stuff smells like Old Spice. Yeah. So it makes you feel all warm and loved. Nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hated it. I mean, I just sprayed it and said, what? <laughs> I'm going to run down there and smell it because I've never bought it. Yeah, put it on your hair. I will. That's a good idea. The good news is that the fragrance wears off in a day or so. It, it evaporates. Yeah, I love the fact that there's no fragrance in the Max because I do have some clients and I do them all on the same day so I don't ever cross-pollinate their desire to have zero fragrance on their dogs because, you know, I do have some fragrance issues myself, <laughs> but uh, the Max is a perfect solution to that. It works really well for the fragrance sensitive. It is so versatile. The, the Crown Royale, it's uh, 16 ounces, costs $13, and it's RTU, ready to use. The Max, you know, first of all, I think that you could dilute the max to as much as 25 to 1. Oh, at least. It's super concentrated. And the the thing about the concentration is that it doesn't over condition. You know, like if you use a dimethicone, like the stuff, if you use too much, you're in trouble, you know, it's fucked up. But 
I mean, excuse my language, but that's the bluntest way I can put it. <laughs> but with the Max, you can use too much and you'll never notice. You'll just spend more money because it just goes down the drain. It just goes down the drain. And, you know, like it's foolish. It's foolish to use the Max right out of the bottle it comes in. Because unless you're measuring like a quarter of a teaspoon, you're using too much. So we dilute it 16 to 1. I like 16 to 1 because it's easy to, to work in a like a 16 ounce or a 17 ounce bottle. I don't think I've ever used it that strong. I really, really dilute it down. You dilute it more than that to put in the in the shampoo? Yeah, I do. In the spray bottle, I, I'm nowhere near 16 to one. I'm way less oh, than Oh, I don't do the 16 to one. No, 16 to one is only if it's a huge matted mess. And when I add it to my recirculator, it's literally drops that I use just drops of it and I can tell you would think you wouldn't tell but I can absolutely tell when that stuff is in there and circulated through the coat it's amazing I love it it's like one of my favorite products there but I can't tell where there's too much except that the volume is disappearing in the bottle way too fast one great tip you gave me is results rinse with the max yep fantastic you can add it to your conditioner. Here's another tip. Show season hypo conditioner with a shot of the Max. Oh, yeah. That's golden. Golden and no smell. <laughs> no allergic reaction. If you've got a sensitive dog or a sensitive person and you've got detangling to do, you don't have to cry about you can't use your stuff because you can make your own silicone conditioner you can add you know i don't have a way of adding optical brighteners <laughs> why do you need optical brighteners and silicones i don't know. silicone are optical brighteners <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you know like i don't know i don't understand that if you want a little something extra if the coat is dry and you want to add something extra use a little uh show seasons hypo conditioner there in a diluted 20 to 1 uh, max in a spray bottle shake that shit up and give those mats a work out and if you're missing the fragrance i take the stasco oatmeal conditioner the protein conditioner and i yeah. put some the max in that to make it just a little bit more powerful in the detangler area yeah and and just one more thing about best shot this advanced amino modified silicone polyether polymer is what they use in most of their shampoos and conditioners as a conditioning ingredient they just use other things as well and this is just the essence of the best thing yes it is the best stuff in the world well you're close <laughs> made from the okay. best stuff on earth <laughs> i love that line it's one of my favorite yeah but i always want to say best shot it's the best shit <laughs> yes I like it. The new slogan. <laughs> See, hear that, Dave? Best shot. It's the best shit. <laughs> He's heard me say that before. All right. Well, I think we've uh, covered all of our subjects for today. Is there anything else you want to add to that? I'm ready for lunch. <laughs> okay. I'm ready for lunch, too. I think that sounds good. Thanks for being here, you guys. And thanks for supporting us. Keep supporting our sponsors. And if you want to donate to Barbara, it's on the webpage want to donate to the show it's the patreon account happy grooming everyone see you next time on the groom pod bye-bye now bye, -bye. bye.